In prior lessons, we learned that biases refer to attitudes and stereotypes that we hold towards most anything, including people. Most important, our biases can impact real-world behavior. So, if we want to promote a genuine tournament of merit, we'd probably want to check whether we have biases. Suppose we want to get inside a department chair's head and uncover her biases. Does she like group A over group B? Does she think members of group B make better leaders than members of group A? How might we find out? Well, we could just ask. Give her a questionnaire, ask her to engage in an honest self-reflection, and then report back. Just think, we could ask all department chairs whether they prefer white folks over black folks, young people over old people, or whether they think men or women work harder in the lab. Suppose each department chair closes her eyes, asks herself for an honest answer, then records it on the survey. You know, as for race, I'm colorblind. As for age, I actually don't like millennials. And it's a close call, but men, at least on average, work harder in the lab. This is what it means for a bias to be explicit. It is consciously accessible through direct introspection. You can close your eyes, ask yourself the question, and elicit an answer. Turns out, this sort of explicit questionnaire technique has stark limits. Even if we are willing to admit these biases to ourselves, we are unwilling to share them with others because that may be embarrassing, unpopular, or politically incorrect. Even more challenging, however, is the fact that many biases exist beyond our conscious awareness. These are implicit biases, those attitudes and stereotypes that we possess but cannot identify through direct introspection. Unlike explicit biases that we know are there but might be unwilling to disclose, we are not even able to look inside ourselves and identify our implicit biases. Thankfully, innovative scientists have developed several tools to measure our implicit biases in ways that don't involve simplistic self-reports. Examples include priming instruments, linguistic tests, and neuroimaging. But the most popular and widely studied tool is the Implicit Association Test, the IAT, which was developed nearly 20 years ago by the folks at Project Implicit. Want to learn more about the IAT and the wealth of data it's generated? Then don't miss my next lesson, the IAT.